ng araw. At uh, malaking bagay po ito sa mga taga-bagyo, lalo na sa mga nagpapatuloy ng mga damit. <laughs> uh, praise God for the sunlight. So, nagpalit na lang po kami ni uh, Pastor Jay. Dahil yung sa akin naman, eh, pwede naman uh, gawing uh, turo sa Sunday School. But uh, patuloy din po ito ng aking turo uh, sa, sa Book of Hebrews. So if you have your Bibles with you, kindly open them to Hebrews chapter 8. Hebrews chapter 8. So as we go there, let us bow our heads in prayer. Heavenly Father, we acknowledge that you are sovereign, that you are in control, that you are God. And without you, we are nothing. And because of this, we ask that you alone may increase as we decrease, that only you may be seen through this teaching. And I pray the help of the Holy Spirit to guide me in my sharing of your truth. Indeed, this is a wonderful passage in the Bible. And uh, I couldn't just help not sharing this or that. And so I pray for your wisdom and enablement so that this would not bring a disservice, but rather it will indeed exude praise from us and at the same time give honor and glory to your holy name. We also ask, Father, that you forgive us of our sins, for we are a uh, sinful people, only saved by grace. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So Hebrews chapter 8, let us read from verse 1 to 13. Now the main point of what we are saying is this. We do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. Now every high priest is appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices. And so it, is, it was necessary for this one also to have something to offer. If he were on earth, he would not be a priest, for there are already priests who, who offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy and shadow of what is in heaven. This is why Moses was warned when he was about to build the tabernacle. See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. But in fact, the ministry Jesus has received is as superior to theirs as the covenant of which he is mediator is superior to the old one. Since the new covenant is established on better promises. For if there had been nothing wrong with that first covenant, no place would have been sought for another. But God found fault with the people and said, The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the people of Israel and with the people of Judah. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to lead them out of Egypt because they did not remain faithful to my covenant. And I turned away from them, declares the Lord. This is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after that time, declares the Lord. I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts and and I will be their God, and they will be my people. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, for I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. By calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete, and what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. This is the word of the Lord. Now, a uh, sample clause taken from www.lawinsider.com on supersedes previous agreements states, this is a, an example of a, of a of an agreement that has been superseded by another. And this is the contempt. This agreement supersedes all prior or contemporaneous negotiations, commitments, agreements, written or oral, 
and writings between the company and consultants with respect to the subject matter thereof. All such other negotiations, commitments, agreements, and writings will have no further force or effect and the parties to any such other negotiation, commitment, agreement, or writing will have no further rights or obligation thereunder. So in this particular agreement, uh, the new agreement has superseded the old one. Okay? And in our study, we will see again another contrast between the old covenant and the new covenant. So there is always this comparison as we have studied in Hebrews chapter 7, a comparison between, uh, between uh, the old covenant and the new covenant as well as the priestly office of the Lord Jesus Christ as differentiated with the priestly office of the Levitical priesthood or the Aaronic priesthood. And so here we will see three things. We will see in the outline a high priest of a different tabernacle in verse 1 and 2. Second that we will see is a high priest of a different offering or sacrifice, verses 3 to 5. And third, a high priest of a different ministry, verses 6 to 13. Chapter 7, last time, expounds on Jesus as the great high priest in the order of Melchizedek, alluding to Psalm 110, verse 4. Now, chapters 8, in our study today, Till we reach chapter 10, will show us the implications of his high priestly office. Again, a contrast is given between the Jesus, uh, the, uh, Jesus' priesthood and the Levitical priesthood. So we go to the first, a high priest of a different tabernacle. So it says here, now the main point of what we are saying is this. After laying down the grounds in chapter 7 of who Jesus is, that he is a, a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek, the writer or the author of Hebrews now says, we do have such a high priest who sat down at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven and who serves in the sanctuary, the true tabernacle set up by the Lord, not by a mere human being. So the main point of, he, uh, of the Hebrew author is this, that the tabernacle Jesus entered to is different in the sense that he entered a more superior and absolute sanctuary or temple. So ang ating Panginoon tumasok po sa, sa isang tabernacle na hindi kagaya ng mga ginagamit ng panahon nila Moses o ng mga Israelita nung lumang tipan. So, kakaiba po, it was an earthly tabernacle, but Jesus went inside a tabernacle greater than that of uh, the uh, priest serving in the tabernacle during the time of Moses. So, it was not a place of worship where the earthly priest enters daily to offer gifts and sacrifices. Jesus entered heaven itself in the very presence of God and is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. Kaya nga makikita nyo yan sa Luke, sa Mark, at maraming verses sa Bible regarding Him who was seated or is seated at the right hand of the throne of the majesty in heaven. And there is no other one who has uh, gained this respect except the Lord Jesus Christ. So the earthly tabernacle was just a copy. It was just a shadow of what is in heaven, the real thing. The true tabernacle set up by the Lord and not by a mere human being, emphasized in verse 2, signifies that now, sinasabi niya, ngayon pala, ngayon na, according to the writer of Hebrews, is realized in the person of Jesus Christ. No longer are the people to remain in the shadow or copy, which was only provisional. Okay? Think of it. The old covenant was just a provisional. Okay? And the new 
is the one that is now established. It is now the culmination. It is now the fulfillment. It is now the the final or the end of all things that were uh, presented by God through the Israelites in the Old Testament by what now is realized in the person, in the priestly office of the Lord Jesus Christ. Second, that we will see here is the high priest of a different offering or sacrifice, verses 3 to 5. Okay, So here we'll see in verse 3 to 5 that the earthly priests of the Levitical priesthood are appointed to offer both gifts and sacrifices, meaning they have to do all what Yahweh had prescribed to them. The offering of gifts and sacrifices such as, as we read the Old Testament, we'll see the burnt offering, we'll see the grain offering, the fellowship offering, the sin offering, the guilt offering, which is mentioned in the book of Leviticus. Okay? And there are still other uh, offerings being made by uh, the people of, of, of Israel. And we have no time to discuss this in detail. But at least we know that these are the very uh, work of the priest. They were to offer such offerings or sacrifices unto the Lord. And such offering is not only for the ordinary people. Like for example, the sin offering is not just for the ordinary Israelite, but also for the priests themselves. Why? Because they are human beings, meaning to say they too are fallen creatures. They err. Okay? Nakakamali din sila. Nakukulang din sila. And thereby, sabi nga, that the uh, chief or the... the the chief high priest enters that uh, place called the Holy of Holies to offer sacrifices on, uh, yearly, not just for the sin of the Israelite, but even for his very own sin as a high priest. So, ganun po. And yet, we see Jesus' Jesus's offering was so different that he offered not any of the sacrificial offerings the Levitical priest offered, such as the animals and grains and fruit offerings, but he offered his himself. He offered his own body as a sacrifice, not for his own sin, okay, not for his own sin. Why? Because he was sinless, but for the sins of the Israelites. Well, but not only just for them, but for the whole world. So, yung po ang kakaibang uh, uh, trabaho o sacrificio na ginawa ng ating Panginoon. So, if He were on earth, sabi nga dyan sa verse, verses na yan na ating binasa, He would not be a priest, meaning to say, in the Levitical sense. Okay? For there are already priests to offer the gifts prescribed by the law. They serve at a sanctuary that is a copy or a shadow of what is in heaven. That is why Moses was warned by God when he was about to build the tabernacle. Sabi dyan ng Panginoon, See to it that you make everything according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. So God was so specific. God was so meticulous. Okay? Sinasabi niya, Okay, kung gagawin mo yung tabernacle, it has to be this way. It has to be divided into the holy place and the holy of holies. And you have to use this type of curtains and this type of pegs and then the ornaments and then the, the lampstands okay? and all the other uh, furnishings laden with gold. That's a very detailed na ating Panginoon. And there is something to this na kailangan natin maintindihan because so many scholars try to divide the law into three, which is what they call the tripartite division of the law, or the Torah. They, they try to divide it into moral, civil, and ceremonial. Now, to many of these scholars, they try to, to explain that the civil and the ceremonial laws have now a lesser degree compared to the moral law. Kaya nga, pagdating sa New Testament, sinasabi, hindi na tayo dun sa ceremonial and dun sa, sa civil. Dun na lang tayo sa moral, yun na lang ang ating sinusunod. Now, I'm not trying to argue with them in, in this regard. Okay? But, 
this is the question that begs to be asked. Okay? How much of the Torah or the law, okay? how much of the Torah or the law is bound to the priesthood? So, kung babasahin natin, for example, babalik tayo sa book of uh, Exodus, ando ng Ten Commandments, so we will say, ah, moral law. Okay? May, uh, tapos, uh, makita natin sa, sa Leviticus, sa, sa Numbers, Deuteronomy, marami dyan yung mga ceremonial, marami dyan yung mga civil laws, specifically to the Israelites. Now, how many of this is bound in the priesthood? Or, ilan dito ang nakadikit sa priesthood? Masasabi ba natin na only this, the moral law, only this? Hindi. The answer is all. Kasi, ito yan eh. Nung sinabi ng Panginoon, nagawin mo yung tabernacle according to the specification. You have to follow this blueprint. And with this comes now the priesthood and the priestly garments and all others pertaining to it. Meaning to say that all of this have been but uh, is now is bound in the priestly office doon sa, sa pare. Kaya nga, sabi sa Hebrews 7.12, when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. So meaning to say, hindi mo pwedeng itingi-tingi yung law and sabihin mo, ah, ito lang kukunin natin, the moral. Ito hindi. Ah, ito hindi. Who are we to change that? E samantalang sinasabi na sa atin ng Hebrew writer, when the priesthood is changed, the law must be changed also. And this is what we need to be thankful. Why? Because we will see on the third uh, uh, thing or outline that I have uh, enumerated. Okay? The third is the high priest of a different ministry. Verses 6 to 13. The Old Covenant was a tribal representative system. What do I mean by, by that? Lagi, pagka nagtuturo si Pastor Jay sa atin, binabanggit siya niya yung in the ancient Near East, ito yung mga klase ng mga agreements na ginagawa. Meron sinatawag na suzerain at meron yung basal. Okay, meron yung talagang namumunong hari at meron din iba-ibang hari. Pero ito maliliit na hari, they are subject to this greater uh, king. Okay? So, here we see that the nation of Israel is mediated by priests, prophets, and kings. Sila yung mga nagmimediate. Yung hari siya yung nandun sa, sa taas at namumuno. And not only does he uh, uphold the law, but he likewise is subject to the law. Na pag siya nagkamali, eh, pati siya eh, pwedeng maparusahan, supposedly, okay? And, the, ang kakaibahan ng Israel is that it, uh, ang Diyos, ang siyang pinaka, ano nila, they are a theocracy. God is their pinaka head. Okay? So even the king is subject to, to God. Kaya nga, ito pong example, that when the king does something wrong or sins grievously, the whole nation suffers as a consequence. An example is uh, David making a census of Israel and Judah in 2 Samuel 24, 10-17. If you would read the account of that, si David, what he did was to count his uh, army. Ay, ang dami ko palang mga magigiting na mga uh, warriors. So, binilang niya. And it was wrong for him to count. Why? Because it shows only one thing that David was already depending on himself and his people or uh, army. And ayon ng Diyos ng ganun. God wanted them to depend upon him and him alone. And because of this, ano nangyari? Okay? Pinagpili siya. Tatlo, namang, tatlo lang naman ang judgment. Okay? One is seven years of famine. Pilika, that's one option. Second is three months of fleeing from their enemies. Three months kayo na laging pinuperso ng mga kaaway nyo. Or yung three days of plague. O tatlo lang. Masabi ni David, yung pinakamaliit na lang three days of plague. Ayaw niya nung sila'y mahulog dun sa kamay ng mga kaaway. 
kung sino'y mamatay sa, sa gutom, yung three days of plague. And yet, we know for a fact that in 2 uh, Samuel 24, 10 to 17, thousands of them likewise died in the three days of plague. Grabe. So, hindi po ganun kadali. Hindi po biro yan. And you say, well, it's unfair. Nagbilang lang naman si David. Ano ba yan? Rather, you ought to thank God that God is not fair in the sense of it. For if He was fair, if God was fair, all of us deserve to go to hell. Sa totoo lang. Kung fairness din lang pag-uusapan, eh sasabihin ng Diyos, o oh, sige, if you want fairness, all of you will go to hell. But, God is seen as one who is righteous and just. Yun ang dapat makita natin dito. Rather, we have to see God as righteous and just. And here, we will see this sort of uh, attributes or character of God in the mediator in the mediatorship of Jesus being superior to that of the Levitical priesthood. Yung sa kanyang gawa na tagapamagitan sa Diyos at sa tao, pinakita nito ang pagiging just at righteous ng Diyos sa pamamagitan ng kanyang pagbibigay ng kanyang buktong na anak na si Jesus sa atin. Siyang umako ng ating kasalanan. So, the uh, mediatorship of Jesus being superior to that of the Levitical priesthood makes it now a new covenant that is now established on better promises. Okay? Jesus' heavenly service is superior to that of the Levitical priest and the new covenant is superior to that of the Mosaic covenant because it is established on better promises. Mas maganda po yung pangako dito kaysa dun sa, sa dati. At ano itong mga promises na ito? Doon po sa ating binasa, if you will read chapters 8 of Hebrews from verse 8 to 12, nandyan po yung promises na ating pong aaralin later. So His sacrificial death brought the new covenant and its promises into effect. Yung kanyang pagsasakripisyo ng kanyang sarili sa krus ng Kalbaryo, ang siyang naging kaparaanan para itong mga pangakong ito ay mangyayari. You'll see that in Hebrews 9.15, in Hebrews 12.24, Hebrews 13.20, in Luke 22.20, in 1 Corinthians 11.25. And what are these? Getting ahead of myself here, one is forgiveness of sin. Withholding of judgment, that is mercy. And it takes our place and gives us eternal life. Now that is grace. Blessings given to undeserving people like you and me. And D.A. Carson comments on this particular passage, For if there was nothing wrong with the first covenant, no place would have sought for another. But God found fault with the people. So if the old covenant met the needs, why is there a need for another? Yan ang question. So this Old Testament text taken from Jeremiah 31.31, Speaking of a new covenant implies that something was actually wrong with the first covenant, that it was limited in its intent and effectiveness. So ano po ang mali dun? Yung pong old covenant was only limited in its intent and effectiveness. At yan, nakita naman natin. Eh. Nakita natin mismo sa buhay ng mga Israelita. Anong nangyari sa kanila? Ito, God found fault with the people. The people cannot by their own strength and devices comply perfectly to what the law entails. Pag binasa niyo po yung Leviticus, parang, ha, oh, grabe naman. Gagawin natin ito ng mga Israelita. At doon pa lang, hindi na nila makaya. And the Israelites fell into a routine and ritualistic way of offering sacrifices for their sins. Naging ritual na lang, magkasala sila. Anyway, may tupa naman yan, sige. Ialay ko na. May hayop naman niya. Sige, ialay ko na. Masolve na. May problema ko. And so it became routinary. 
The old covenant was not evil. Okay, per se. The old covenant was not evil. But incomplete and provisional. Binigay lang ng Panginoon yun para lang sa ganun, at least maibsan yung mga pagkukulat, pagkakasalan ng mga Israelita during that time. But God in His mind was already planning that there is going to be that perfect sacrifice that's going to be offered. Not anymore the animal sacrifice, but one who is perfect, who is just and who is righteous and true. And so Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34 explains further the limitations of the old covenant and the need for a new one. This is the longest Old Testament citation in the New Testament, yung ating binasa from verse 8 hanggang verse 12. Ayan po ang Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Okay? It is the longest Old Testament citation na nakalagay sa New Testament. How important is that? Very, very important. The promise of a new covenant in the future came at a time when the former covenant was still in force. During the time of Jeremiah, when he penned this uh, particular verses, the old covenant was in force. The Mosaic law was in force. Okay? And dinagdagan pa nga yan ng mga... Uh, mga Hudyo. Hindi lang yung mga mga written but even the oral. And uh, kahit yung mga yun, kaya nga niririgok ni Jesus mga Pharisees precisely because hindi naman yung kasali pero sinama niyo pa. And yet, ang gusto na ipakita ng Panginoon is that okay, sundin niyo yung batas pero at, uh, at the same time sana huwag niyo i-neglect yung area of mercy and grace yung tunay na paninindihan sa Panginoon. And so we see here that sinabi na, panahon pa lang ni Jeremiah, the old covenant was in place, but he was already, God was already telling Jeremiah, banggitin mo to sa mga Israelita. So here we see that uh, Jeremiah emphasizes the difference between these two covenants. They are not the same. The old is not the new, they are separate. It will not be like the covenant I made with their ancestors. So very specific ang Diyos. Hindi ito kagaya nung una na aking ibinigay sa inyong mga ancestors. Though they are related, the old and the new are related, the new doesn't renew the old. Hindi ito a rehash of the old law covenant. Rather, it is new. Hindi ito yung, ah, ipapasok natin yung old. Tapos, uh, sige, iayos na lang natin. Hindi. It is not a rehash. It is new. It is different. Bago. And this is the covenant I will establish with the people of Israel after the time, declares the Lord. Jeremiah already was hinting out what this covenant would be like. Yung sinabi niya, I will put my laws in their minds and write them on their hearts. This speaks of a supernatural working of God in the life of a sinner. Kaya nga tayo, makakarelate tayo rito. If you're a born-again Christian, makakarelate ka because it's not you, it's not me, it's not something we did or we do. It is a supernatural working of God in our lives. This is the regenerating work of the Holy Spirit. At sinabi dyan, I will be their God and they will be my people. God is calling a people to Himself. No longer will they teach their neighbor or say to one another, Know the Lord, because they will all know me from the least to the greatest. Meaning to say, personal relationship with and true fidelity are closely related promises. Pag ikaw talaga ay naborn again, ikaw ay talagang nakakilala, ikaw ay regenerate ng Holy Spirit, indeed mababago ka. Something is going to change in you. Okay? And... To know God in this sense is not just mere intellectual assent, but rather a recognition of God's authority over a person's life for him to obey God's will. Hindi na ngayon ikaw ang nasusunod. Ang Diyos na ang gusto mong sundin. Yan yung pagbabago mangyayari sa iyo. Why, why am I saying this? Because a lot of uh, uh, churches now don't even preach this anymore. 
They say na tanggapin mo lang ang Panginoon. Meaning to say, even yung pagtanggap, yung pag-save natin is according to our uh, understanding or belief na tinanggap siya eh. But rather, no. Are we the seeker? No. Christ is the seeker. He sought after us. Why? Because we were lost ships. Going astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. It was Christ who was seeking for us. Siya po yung tumawag sa atin. That's why he's called the good shepherd. And it says here, For I will forgive their wickedness and will remember their sins no more. The new covenant emphatically promises full or complete and eternal forgiveness which the Mosaic order could not accomplish. But Jesus has provided in full through his sacrifice on the cross. And so by calling this covenant new, he has made the first one obsolete. And what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. The writer of Hebrews alludes to the word soon. Tandaan niyo to. Nung binabanggit ito ng Hebrew writer, okay, nung binabanggit ng Hebrew writer itong chapter thir- uh, verse 13 ng chapter 8, ito po ang sinasabi niya. By calling this covenant new, okay, he has made the first one obsolete and what is obsolete and outdated will soon disappear. So, ang sinasabi nito is that the writer of Hebrews alludes to the word soon, not to himself or his counterparts or his contemporaries, but rather during Jeremiah's time. He was just trying to expound what Jeremiah wrote in Jeremiah 31, 31 to 34. Na sinasabi niya, soon, ito ang mangyayari. Why? Because Jeremiah was under the old covenant. But sinasabi niya, soon, there's going to be a new covenant and will replace the old covenant. So yan yan. So this means that when Christ inaugurated the new covenant through his death on the cross, the old covenant was rendered obsolete and outdated. So, nung namatay si Jesus sa krus ng Kalbaryo, yung, yung sinasabi ni Jeremiah nung kanyang nung panahon niya, ay nagkaroon na ng katuparan doon sa ginawa ni Jesus sa krus ng Kalbaryo. Yeah. Therefore, we who live on this side of the cross no longer adhere to the old covenant but the new. Okay? Does this mean that we nullify the law by being antinomian or antinom? Not at all. For the law is the knowledge of sin. We are not antinomian here in RCC or in Redeemer's Christian Church. Na minsan na nababansakan kami, ah, antinomian kayo. Hindi. We, ang dami niya sa, sa book of Romans, makikita na natin na hindi naman nila nullify yung, yung law. Pero pinapakita lang, ano ang gamit ng law? Okay? So here it says, For the law is the knowledge of sin. Romans 3.20 Paano natin malalaman ang, ang ginagawa ng isang tao ay kasalanan kung wala ang batas? Kaya nga the law points us to, to Christ. Points us to our sinfulness and our need of a Savior. Ayan. But now, the righteousness of God apart from the law is revealed. So may sinasabi na may parating na righteousness na manggagaling sa Diyos. Which is apart from the law. Which is different from that law the, 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 which is under the old covenant. Being witnessed by the law and the prophets themselves. Romans 3.21 so mismo yung law and the prophets were looking forward to the time when this righteousness of God is going to appear and now discard the old one. And here we see that Christ is the fulfillment of the law. Romans 10.4 So we are now under the law of Christ 
and non, not under the law of the old covenant. That is why hindi na po tayo nagkakatay ng kung anong mga hayop para ialay. Why? Because already all those copies and all those shadows have now come uh, to their fulfillment in the person and work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And proving that by His resurrection. Saying, na ako na ang katuparan ng lahat na yan. I am the resurrection and the life. Okay? Because through Christ, Jesus, the law of the Spirit who gives life has set you free from the law of sin and death. So, sinasabi dyan na sa pamamagitan ng ating Panginoon, the law of the Spirit who gives life, tayo na mga born again, tayo na mga binago na ng Panginoon, are now set free from the law which only brings about the sin and death. Meaning to say, the old covenant law is only pointing to us to our sinfulness and to our death. Kung wala ang kamatayan ni Jesus, bali wala pa rin yung old covenant na yan. Why? Because sabi nga, it is limited in its scope. Okay? It is not final. It is just provisional. And now, everything has been made complete in the person and work of Jesus Christ. Because of this, we need to be thankful because si Jesus ang siyang gumawa na ng lahat ng ito para sa atin. So this assures us, if you are a born-again Christians, Christian, then you indeed are a child of God. Anak ka ng Diyos. Okay? So, gusto ko sana magsalita, pero gusto ko na itigil dahil meron pa tayong isang topic mamaya. So, if you have any questions dito po sa ating uh, inaral ngayon, please uh, do so and Pastor Jay would answer your questions. <laughs> meron po ba? May mga katanungan? O klaro ba? O hindi klaro? Let me know. O hindi clear? Para mamaya ikaklaro pa lang gusto ni Pastor J. Okay. Meron? Counting one, two, three, wala. Let us close in prayer and then we'll have a five minute break and then we'll go immediately to the uh, second service, our uh, main uh, preaching. Okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, what what great a God we have in you and how deep is your word to us and how deep is your love to, towards us sinners as we are that you reach out to us to the perfect sacrifice of your son Jesus Christ in order to save us now who are we to boast that we have chosen you no we have not Lord God but rather you have called us to save us from our sinfulness. Indeed, Lord, this humbles us. All the more we ask, Father, for your grace and mercy to pour upon our lives and continue to amaze us as we continually ponder upon your truth. This would enable us to be strong because in our time today, there are a lot of questions even among believers, especially among the young people, of why this so-called guy who, is now, who was a pastor has now turned his back on Christianity and, has, and is now boasting about him as uh, being one with the world and no longer a minister of the gospel. And I hope and pray that this particular message would uh, indeed take root in our hearts, giving us that uh, assurance that we are indeed a people of God. Thank you once again. We give you praise, we give you honor and glory. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Amen. So five-minute break. My coffee put I done.